Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Majin Vegeta figure, which is one that so many people were so very excited about, and I've heard so many people complain so very much about, and it's very interesting to me, because I think most of the complaints people are having are either greatly exaggerated or maybe even fabricated. Let's see, we're gonna go ahead and get this guy off the stand so that we can take a closer look. This guy stands to the top of his head, let's say about 13 and a half if you want to count the hair, we're all the way up to 16 and a half centimeters. I know it doesn't look like that, that's just the angle of the camera, guys, I have to look at it in real life. That makes him a little over five and a quarter inches to the top of his head and about six and a half inches, six and a quarter-ish to the top of his hair. So pretty much well scaled, I have a Goku here, this is closest thing to the, to the new Goku we're going to be getting, so that's why I wanted to use this one as comparison. Vegeta is definitely a little bit tall. And, I mean, his, his scale has changed drastically throughout the series, so is it an absolute deal breaker? Probably not. Uh, it is something to note, though, that Vegeta definitely has a lot of size in this version. And like I said, I know it's not as necessarily inaccurate as some might think, but it is worth mentioning. It may be a little bit, depending on which artwork you're referencing. Now, overall, this guy, the aesthetic's not terrible. Uh, and a lot of people, at least as far as I can tell, and of course it's always just the people that don't like things that are the loudest, so you end up seeing that, and people that are happy tend to not bother commenting and things like that. So, you know, it's hard to judge what the general consensus is by collectors, but I've heard a lot of people say that he's very glossy. And there is some shine to him. You can see on his chest in particular, there is a little bit of shine to him, but I would hold that it is not inconsistent with this guy. And nobody said that about this guy as far as I can remember. So his chest is just as shiny. Now here's the thing. This guy has a decent amount of shading on him and that hides that shine and tempers it a little bit. So this guy's shine stands out a little bit more and it's definitely not a good thing, don't get me wrong, but we need to be consistent across the board here. It doesn't stand out that much compared to the other figures. Even the painted blue on this guy's gi, basically the same amount of shine. So it's something we need to consider at least when judging these figures. Now the skin tone's not shiny at all. That's pretty much consistent with the rest of the figures. Same thing with the white on the boots. So it's really just really just the chest, but the rest of it too a little bit. Uh, now like I said, there's almost no shading on this guy. It's very strange how he's completely devoid of shading on the skin and on the suit. It's definitely a bummer. Uh, the only real shading I can find is right here along his hairline. And I think that's done well enough. Would I prefer a little bit more? Yeah, I think so, but it is nicely feathered in there and it doesn't stand out too bad, so I like it. Uh, there is one other issue with the paint, and that is that the upper body here is clear clearly painted, the part that's on top of the blue. It definitely could be painted a little bit better, and not in the line work so much as the coloring. It's not quite right, and in some places it's slightly translucent. Definitely not a deal breaker, but it's worth noting. Now the last thing that I think people have probably had issues with, I'm not sure about this, I don't know if I've heard anyone say this, but this part of the plastic right here is a different color. I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but the blue here and the blue here, not the same. This one's a lot duller. This one's a lot more vibrant. It's not going to be hugely noticeable once you pose him, so I don't know again if that's going to be a deal breaker, because this guy does do a lot of things really well, and we're going to get to that in the articulation section. But it's worth noting that the blues are inconsistent, because that definitely does affect the aesthetic. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about accessories because this is another place where this guy kind of shines. So we have a bunch of different faces. We have the neutral face that comes on him in the package. Then we have another kind of neutral face that is almost the exact same thing as the regular one. It just has a couple of veins in the forehead for the most part. That's the biggest difference. Then we have one where he's got like his full on smiley teeth showing and he's, he's got the veins going. And then we have another one where he's kind of like a half smirk and no veins. And then we have one where he's like full on laughing or I'm guessing laughing and the veins are showing and they're all really nicely detailed. The faces look really good on this guy. We don't have a ton of other accessories though. We only have a few hands. We have the two fist hands that come on him in the package, two karate chop hands, two kind of just general style pose hands, and then one iconic style pose hand with the two fingers and thumb pointing forward. So that's it for accessories. Not a lot, but the faces are great. Now it's time for articulation. Some good and some bad. The first being the head is not good articulation. You can see right there, there is no room for that ball hinge to move. It's a tiny ball hinge and it's going to be a nightmare to pose this guy. So you have to be extra careful when posing this guy if you really want to get some nice poses done. You're mostly just going to get a swivel and that's about it. Luckily the neck is on a ball peg and that does help the posing a good deal. 
For the shoulders, we have a butterfly joint, which is pretty well executed, not too bad. A ball peg that connects the arm to that. And then we have our hinge, which doesn't quite get the arms all the way up, so that's a bit of a bummer. The rotation, no problem at all. Bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and a ball hinge wrist, which is just about fine. Now the wrists, I mean the hands and the gloves, don't quite match because the gloves are painted, hands are molded. They could have done a little bit more to make that work. Nice thing though is the sculpt on the arms are very nice with the veins added. We have a ball peg and a hinge here for the torso, so you can technically lift him up to make him a little bit taller, squash him down a little bit, but that's really just to help him lean over and lean back, and it works pretty well. Going side to side, it's not so great. It's not bad, but it's not great. We do get a little bit of rotation, but on mine it's very stiff and doesn't afford much, so you're going to have to use that rotation down here at the waist, which does also have a hinge on it, so you can lean him forward and back on there as well. And There's a little bit of leaning, but that's about it. Now for the hips, we get really good range going out to the side. Maybe the best yet with these newer hips. Very, very well executed. All the way forward, all the way back. Excellent range of motion in the hips. Thigh swivels fine. Double jointed knees, very nicely executed. And then we have the ankles, which are garbage. We have that double ball peg combo, which lets the foot go forward a little bit. Goes back a little bit. And it has a tiny bit of an ankle rocker. This is a step backwards. These are really bad ankles, relatively speaking. And then we have a toe hinge, which is okay. So posability-wise, this guy's going to be able to pose really nicely. Uh, aesthetically, he's not the best-looking figure in the world. There's not a whole lot of paint there, and the two-tone blue is definitely a bummer. Any sort of neutral poses are going to make that stand out, but dynamic poses should be just fine. So I'm going to recommend it. I really like the articulation. I don't think the shininess is a huge issue, because it's not going to stand out across the, across the rest of the line too much. So it could be better, but it's not anywhere near as bad a figure as I think some people are making it out to be. So I would say don't miss the boat. If you want one of these guys, grab one. And then if you don't end up liking it, you can always sell it off or something. But if you end up not getting it now and it turns out people end up buying them, you could be in a bad situation. So make sure you grab one if you think you might want one. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up almost every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games, all kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you come back for that. Subscribe to the like button, like the bell, and in the meantime, keep collecting.